Okay, so this uh, is sort of an example that allows us, a shiny application that allows us to explore the sampling table a little bit more. So recall the sampling table is just like this this two by two table that, that has these different boxes, right? Order matters with replacement, order doesn't matter, et cetera, et cetera. And we learned um, the ways to count these with like analytical formulas, right? Like we learned the binomial coefficient and we learned, uh, you know, n to the k and the Bose-Einstein result. And this is just an example to sort of solidify what it really means to sample with order mattering, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, first, the, the key here is that we're sampling, right? So we're going to define, in, in this simple example, we're just going to say n, we're going to allow n equal to 3 so that we have three objects and we label them 1, 2, and 3, right? Nice and easy. And then we allow k to be 2. So throughout this process, we're going to have three objects, and we're going to sample two of them, and we're going to decide over here uh, the way that we sample them. So quick refresher, when we sample with order matters, so let's real quick uh, go to order matters. When we sample with order matters, we're saying that the order in which we sample uh, matters, right? And that's kind of, I couldn't think of a better way to say it. Um, what do I mean by that? We'll see the here's like all the permutations we have. So we you know we list we have nine total sorry nine total permutations. Each row is a permutation. Basically, that's saying each row is one possible sample. In in this case, we have nine possible ways to choose to sample two objects out of three objects when we sample in this way. When we sample when order matters and we go with replacement. So go back to what does it mean for order to matter? Think about this row, right? In this row we sample the one and then we sample the three and compare that to this row, sampling a three and then sampling a one. These two groups, like the makeup of the groups are the same, right? There's the one in the group and the three in the group. The only difference, of course, is the order, right? In this group, we sample the one first. In this group, we sample the three first. When order matters, we care about uh, that difference. We want to count these separately. If we toggled, right, if we held the with replacement constant and toggled to this option where we just have, we still have with replacement, but order doesn't matter, we should see, um, we, we should only have one of these rows, right? We, we don't care. Order doesn't matter, so we don't care about the rows, so we click that and we see now, look, we have one and, sorry, we have one and three, but we don't have three and one anymore, and we don't really have um, any repeats. So this, this, this row kind of puts a constraint on this row, right? We don't want to count the, the order matter the order mattering. Okay, so now let's think about with replacement. Re with replacement basically means that we can sample an object multiple times. So here we sampled one, we sampled object one, and then we were able to sample it again, right? We put it back, we, we grabbed one, we marked that we had it, and then we put it back in the population and we grabbed it again. So here, you know, we can grab one twice, we can grab two twice, we can grab three twice. These are all possible ways. If we toggle to this fourth kind of level of the sampling table, order doesn't matter without replacement, right? So we're holding constant order doesn't matter and we go without replacement. In this new example, or we sample without replacement, right? So if we pick one, we can't pick it again. It goes in the bucket and or it comes out of the bucket and we can't pick it again. So we shouldn't see these kind of double rows. And as you see, we select order doesn't matter without replacement, and now we have no you know no double rows. Um, so this is kind of an extra. This fourth row is kind of an extra constraint on this row, right? And we can no longer sample um, with replacement. Uh, and it, you, as you can kind of see, like this top row, we kind of have the most permutations because we want to count all the orders. We can sample with, with replacement and we kind of slowly work down this bottom row. Um, we say we don't want to count all the orders and we um, can't, aren't allowed to sample without, yeah, we're not allowed to sample with replacement. Um, so we have the lowest number of permutations. And you'll see that even as we increase n, right? We can increase n and 3. In this case, we only have 10 permutations for uh, this fourth row. If we go to the first row, we have a lot, right? We have 125 permutations because there's a lot of ways uh, to sort of choose, in this case, where order matters and we sample with replacement, right? So here, like, you know, clearly we're sampling with replacement of the first row. We got 1, 1, 1. Let's see if we can find an order matters. Yeah, so here's, so we think about this row, 1, 1, 2 versus this row, 1, 2, 1. The only difference is that right order is the only different thing and it matters, so we want to count them. Um, so hopefully this just gives you a better sense of what it means to sample with order mattering uh, with replacement and to think about like the constraints. So think about which one should be larger. Generally, when we say order matters, we have more options. Uh, and when we say with replacement, we have more options. And that kind of makes sense. You've seen sometimes we've had to divide out um, because order doesn't matter, right? So we're dividing out the total number. Um, so we think of order not mattering without replacement as kind of constraints that lower the total amount of permutations.